Welcome to another installment of Boot Camp for the Saints, equipping the Saints for today. Today we're going to take a look at Matthew chapter 24, which is a rather popular chapter in the Bible, uh, telling about the end days, and we're going to take a look at it in the light of 2023 with the war in Gaza and all the other things happening. Uh, congratulations to Mike Johnson. Uh, somehow, Republicans got together to elect a Speaker of the House that's a Christian, but we all know when something like that happens, the devil is plotting to strike back in any way he can. Anyway, uh, we also know that God speaks to us and um, different ways sometimes verbally like he's done to the prophets but the major ways are through his word and through prayer and through daily events so let's take a look at uh, Matthew chapter 24 based on what we've been seeing today which is getting rather strange okay first off what we're going to do is we're going to just open up the whole uh, Bible, get it large enough so everybody can see it. As Jesus was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings. Well, one of the things is, uh, because I highlight this, we want to look at, okay, we got all these different colors and what is repeating. One of the most important things in a story is what is repeated and where it is where is it repeated and why is it repeated now the first thing we start seeing is grounds buildings earthquakes world oh nations a whole lot of words that have to deal with the world okay and when we see this section up here through verse 14 mentioning the world a whole bunch of times we see mislead deceive threats against the rest all of these negative words that are associated with the world okay that shouldn't surprise us then we see action words like leaving come follow followers coming come and then as we go down we see the pregnant women and nursing then we start seeing the messiah messiah uh, son of man son of man so instantly we know this is telling the sequence of the end of the world so let's start out as we already know before we can understand this chapter chapter 24 we have to see how the writer led into it which means we got to take a look back at the previous chapter in the previous chapter it says then which means take a look at the previous chapter but we're not going to go back that far uh, Jesus said to the crowds and his disciples the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses so practice and obey whatever they tell you and don't follow their example for they don't practice what they teach they crush people with impossible religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. In other words, they're, they're double-minded. And we have to look at this within the context. Jesus is talking about the religious leaders of his time, the Jewish people. And he goes down there and repeats the words hypocrites. And then we can just see the words hypocrites 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 blind 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 repeated blind guides blind pharisees hypocrites hypocrites and lawless hypocrites and, and we already know the background of the story you know the the jews the jewish leaders at that time were going to kill jesus and we're leading into that story but in between that story, this chapter, which we know as Matthew 24, was insert, inserted to where 
the disciples asked Jesus, okay, what's the sign of your coming? But he responded, you see these buildings? I tell you the truth, they will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Is that true today? Well, we have that wailing wall, which one stone is on top of another, but for the most part, that temple is pretty much demolished. And it was done by the Romans. We can go through history and take a look at that. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us when will all of this happen? Now you notice it says they came to him privately. They wanted to talk to him alone, but Matthew recorded it so we can all read it. In other words, when we see something like his disciples came to him privately and we're given this to read, we're part of the whole group. We're all in the same boat. Tell us when will this will when all this will happen. What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Now this kind of gets me. Okay, I gotta ask the question when I see this. The disciples know that when Jesus returns, it'll be the end of the world. And the thing about it is, is you know, this brings up a lot of questions. It's, uh, number one, they couldn't believe that Jesus could actually be killed. They didn't, after Jesus told them three times what was going to happen to them, they couldn't believe what they saw in front of their eyes. And, and all this information that Jesus shared with them over three years just went right out the window. They were faced with a catastrophe and and their minds lost connection and and lost connection with God with the Holy Spirit with Jesus himself they were fearful everything went haywire so we got to keep that in mind Jesus told them don't let anyone mislead you you know this means even yourself you know the devil is going to be constantly going after you in every which way and form he can He's going to mass devils, his demons, around the people that he feels are the biggest threat. And we got to keep on praying for Mike Johnson, new speaker of the house, because he came out and mentioned God in his acceptance speech more times than I've ever heard in Congress before. As a matter of fact, I was waiting for the camera to pan around and show the reaction of the Democrats hearing the word God mentioned in the halls of Congress and the House of Representatives that many times and see if any of them just happen to burst into flames. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. Now here's the thing that we got to look at because what is the meaning of the word Messiah? And to do that we want to look at the King James and we're in Matthew 24, 5, and we got to click on and look at the dictionary and everything else. So we're at Matthew 24, 5, and it says here, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, uh, King James decided to use the word Christ, so the Messiah. Do they mean the same thing? Well, we got to take a look at it. So we take a look at uh, 5547, Christ Crystal, from 5548. It means anointed. It is the Messiah. Okay, so we got to dig in a little bit deeper. This is, we want to get back to the root meaning, uh, 5548. And when we take a look at 5548, we see probably akin to 5530 through the idea of contact to smear or rub with oil. That is by implication to consecrate to an office or religious service. So we see it's, it's not just someone claiming to be the Messiah to save the world, blah, 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 the whole bit. Uh, you know, what we usually hear about being false Christ and everything, 
they're someone that is pretending to be consecrated to a religious office or service. So this could be a whole range of people. Okay, and if we take a look at 5530, uh, and, and, and we got a, it says probably akin to 5530. This is a guess, you know, because they don't really know the exact Hebrew language. It's a, a middle voice, primary verb, perhaps rather 5495 to handle, to furnish, that is needed to give an oracle and graze, touch, slightly light upon it. That doesn't give us a whole lot of information to go on, so words is going to stick with the anointed, which we know anointed has something to do with oil. So we can flip right back to the Bible and go on to the rest of the chapter. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Now, one of the things I want to mention here is is we've got the war in Gaza, and uh, we've got all of this stuff happening. And I'm really getting tired of the left news saying we got to end the war. We got to end the war. Well, uh, day one, Israel offered Hamas unconditional surrender. So, you know. You imagine this left news during World War II. I mean, you know what, what happened in World War II. They basically uh, bombed Berlin into oblivion uh, with B-52 bombers and conventional bombs, which included incinerary bombs and everything else. Uh, they got the factories and bombed neighborhoods, schools, churches, everything to finally bring Hitler to his knees. And then we know what happened with Japan and the atomic bomb and Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So, what would the left news be saying then? Well, okay, we don't want unconditional surrender. We just, no, no, no. We just, you know, let the Jews handle it themselves. Uh, nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. Are we seeing this today? Yeah, we're seeing more war, wars today than uh, I can remember. You know, in wars, let's face it, uh, 1918, uh, 1943, it was not even an entire generation, but it seems like every generation is involved in a war. Uh, but all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Then, and this part I don't like, I don't think anybody likes it, you will be arrested and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. <coughs> Now, what we're seeing today is, 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 is a big uprising of radical Muslims in all kinds of cities all over the United States, open border, all of this stuff. Uh, let's face it, the criminals hate us, the Democrats hate us, uh, Antifa hates us, uh, BML leaders hate us, uh, everybody hates the Christians. What are we going to be facing in the next couple of weeks or a couple of years or whatever? We... We know it's it's not going to be pretty. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. Now here we go. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Uh, once we get to this later, we notice that, that, that you know, right here, false messiahs, false prophets... This is repeated throughout this chapter for a reason. And we've got to pay attention to this. Uh, we know that the false prophet will gather people to war along with the, uh, the beast and uh, you know, the whore, the woman sitting on a beast. And they're going to be thrown in, in a lake of fire. But 
you know, we're going to see all kinds of false prophets, not just one. You know, just don't focus on a single person. Devil's going to use whoever he can, however he can. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. Well, I looked up this word love, and guess what? It just means love. It, it, it means the affectionate feeling we normally feel uh, between within the family is going to be gone. Affections, respect, you usually have between people is going to grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Now, look how Jesus links the love of the world and enduring to the end. You know, we, 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 we really can't lose. You know, Jesus is a cornerstone, but love is part of the foundation that Christianity is built on. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it and then the end will come. Well, has all nations heard uh, the gospel, read the Bible, have access to the Bible? Yeah, pretty much so. The day is coming when you will see Daniel the prophet spoke about the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing in the holy place. Reader, pay attention. Now this is really important because of the fact, you know, there there's going to be a sacrilegious object, which is basically the devil, will be standing in the holy place. He's going to be the one to try to save the world. Is that the new green deal? Is that... Uh, all these things being put together. I mean, that Gretchen Wunschmacallit, she wrote a book about uh, uh, green wars, you know, uh, rechargeable tanks, uh, battery-powered aircraft, uh, clean biodegradable bombs. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, uh, someone was behind her because uh, I don't know how old she is, but she's not smart enough to come up with these ideas on her own. Then those in Judah must flee to the hills. Uh, now, one of the things I did is, is is I looked up this word Judah, and it's kind of interesting. Oh, man, this keeps on flipping around. Okay, look up this word Judah, and we're going to take a look at 2460, and we're going to pop on back to the King James again. Uh, plus, and, and we're going to take a look at this 2429, 2449 and when we take a look at 2449 uh, it's a feminine of 2453 the Judean land so we take a look at 2453 and this is kind of interesting it, this is from 2448 in the sense of 2455 as a country that is belonging to Judea and we want to look at this because we're hearing about this in the news every day now in October 2023. And this is of Hebrew origin, uh, 3063, or perhaps 3194. And Judea, that is Judea, Judah, a part or a place in Palestine. Oh, okay. And we're hearing about the Jews and the Palestinians. But we got to take a look at this 3063. And if we pop on down to 3063. And this is about the quickest way to go through it. Just keep on clicking down. And we got to click down quite a few ways to 3063. Bear with me now. I got one more. 3063. This is a neuter, singular of the same as 3062. Something remaining. Okay. We're all following along and we got 3062. Something remaining. Masculine. A plural of a derivative of 3007. The remaining ones. Other. Which remain. Uh, a remnant of residue arrest. And this all sounds like it like it fits directly in with, with what we're looking at 
in Gaza and Israel, the war, and, and it's pretty strange why they picked the name Israel, which was, you know, the ten northern kingdoms that immediately crossed over into pagan worship, following the Bible, and they have the Old Testament, so they should know better. Okay, 3007, a primary verb, to leave, that is to fail, to be absent. So, that's it means to leave a primary verb to leave so when we flee Judah the actual meaning of Judah is to leave which sounds pretty strange so we're gonna get back into this a little bit more then those in Judah must flee to the hills and 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 Judah actually means to leave you know, are, are, are you getting a sense of God knew what, what what he was doing when he wrote this Bible? So, we're going to go on after looking at something interesting. A person out in the deck of a roof must go down to the house to pack. A person out in the field must not return even to get a coat. Now, when we combine these three, those in Judah must flee to the hills. We know that Judah actually means to flee. Does Judah just include the people that are in Israel right now, today? Or does it just mean the Jews? Or do we go back to the root meaning that Judah simply means to flee? Uh, those who are supposed to flee must flee to the hills. So does it cover the whole world? Okay, I'm going to leave that up to you. How terrible it will be for pregnant women and for nursing mothers in those days. And pray that your flight be not in winter or on the Sabbath. And and, and, and this because it mentions the Sabbath. The people like to you know say, well, this is just for the Jews. Well, okay. Whatever you want to think. For there will be greater anguish than at any time since the world began, and it will never be so again. In fact, unless the time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive, but it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. Now you see here, it says God's chosen ones. So is that an interpretation for the those in Judah? I'm going to leave that up to you. Then, if anyone tells you, look, here is the Messiah, or there is a Messiah, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. See, I have warned you about this ahead of time. So, if anyone tells you, look, the Messiah is out in the desert, don't bother to go and look. Or, look, he is hiding here, don't believe it. So, you notice how he puts in here, I have warned you ahead of time. And this is repeated, we saw it before. Uh, don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. And we know this Messiah is the anointed one has something to do with anointing oil it's just not someone pretending to be the savior uh it's it's someone that's anointed with a message there will be false people anointed with a message and false prophets that basically we see how these false prophets are actually defining what a false messiah is and we're not supposed to go there for as the lightning flashes in the east and shines in the west, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. In other words, this is going to be quick. You know, the blink of an eye. And we all know that. Just as the gathering of vultures shows, there will be a carcass nearby. So these signs indicate that the end is near. Uh, isn't this kind of a really strange way of a symbol? Strange symbol, gathering of vultures? And we know this was used to bring us back to or forward to Revelation, to the gathering of the vultures. 
uh, the call, the angel calls the birds together for this great feast after everybody is wiped out. Immediately after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened. Now you notice, immediately after the anguish of those days, this is right after we have all these false prophets and all this stuff fling to the hills and all that stuff. The sun will be darkened and the moon will give no light. The stars will fall from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. So this is immediately after the anguish of those days. And what we're going to do is we're going to just take a quick look at the King James and see how the King James Plus kind of configured this sentence immediately uh, now I have these pop-ups immediately after the tribulation of these days shall the sun be darkened so it says immediately after and immediately means we can take a look at uh, 2112 we can click on the here we can go on down to whatever verse we got to look for the red one immediately uh, which is it's always kind of flips around 2112 it's an adverb from 2117 directly that is at once or soon 2117 tells us that it's perhaps from so we don't really have to look that's straight uh, literally or level so basically we're looking at it and and we can take a look at definition of tribulation uh, 2347 in case you're interested you know you can take a look at all of these words yourself and dig into it a lot deeper see if you find anything but this 2347 from 2346 which is pressure and this dash means it's it's translated afflicted anguish burden persecution tribulation trouble it just means pressure. Uh, actually, this must be physical and mental pressure. It's from 2346. So we look at 2346 akin to the base of 5147. That's the crowd. So this is people getting thrown together and people having a whole lot of pressure. So we're going to get right back into and continue on the Bible. Okay, what's happening here? Uh, we should be able to just go into the Bible. That's having a bit of problems right now. <laughs> Immediately after the anguish of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give her light. The stars will fall from the sky and the powers of heaven will be shaken. So we know all of this stuff is going to happen after all of these previous things happen so this is giving us this light blue is a timing and this near days I highlighted all these things that have to do with timing and let me just try clicking to another bible see if I can oh here we go and then we can click on down to the NLT and then at last the sign that the Son of Man is coming will appear in the heavens and there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now we got to realize also that when we see this coming it's going to happen what? Really, really quick. Immediately. Like a flash of lightning. And he will send out his angels with the mighty blast of a trumpet, and he will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the furthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now, this brings us right into Revelation, to where John actually added a whole lot of details to this story. Now, learn a lesson from a fig tree. When his branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know, summer is near. I'm not going to ask you how many people actually look at and notice, you know, a tree that's budding in the spring. Most people don't notice the leaves on a tree, <coughs> excuse me, until they're in full leaf. We just don't pay attention to small details. And Jesus uses illustration to point that out. 
In the same way, when you see all these things, you can know his return is very near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, just generation will not pass from the scene until these things take place. And this is one of the things, you know, that, that, that you know, confuse people. Well, how come it didn't happen in Matthew and the time of the disciples? Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Well, don't forget, in their time, the book of Revelation was given. Was that what Jesus was referring to? It was going to be recorded for all to read? It kind of seems that way in the next sentence when he talks about his words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son of Man himself. Only the Father knows. Now this is probably our, our, our greatest indication of who to stay away from because there's all these false prophets and false messiahs who are claiming they know exactly when this is going to happen and they pull out a verse here and a verse there, put it together into a 40-minute story and tell you that They've got this secret information. <laughs> when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In Noah's days, before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Now, we got to pay attention to this because we're in the business of trying to save souls and trying to turn people over to Christ and everything else. Well, guess what? Noah was in the same business. And how many people did he convince? I think the number was eight out of the whole world. That's not to say that there weren't other people that believed. You know, only eight got into the boat. But... We can't expect to save the entire world. Two men will be working together in a field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour in a mill. One will be taken, the other left. Now, people look at this as some kind of rapture or something like that. As a matter of fact, that's what they call rapture. They, matter of fact, they take these two verses and they made a whole new religion out of it. Is that true? Well, not with the previous verse to where it points out that not a whole lot of people believe Noah. So this is just emphasizing how many people are going to believe us. Maybe one man will believe us, but not another. Maybe one woman will believe us, but not another. And these are people that we pointing out work with you know people that know us not everyone's going to believe us so you too must keep watch for you don't know what day your Lord is coming in other words yeah we might be able to do a whole bunch of stuff to save people but we got to keep watch ourselves we got to know what we're looking for we got to pay attention to what's in scripture what's happening today the answers we're hearing in our prayers and we gotta always be listening for that audible word of God understand this that the homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into now this helps explain exactly what it is by you know two men one will be taken the other one left two women one will be taken the other one left uh there's a whole lot of people that believe they know exactly what's happening and they fall for all these false prophets and false messiahs that were repeated how many times? Five times in this chapter. And they believe these people and they keep on listening to these people and they keep on thinking they know what time it is prophetically and they're wrong 100% of the time. This is just explaining the previous verses. You also must rely, be ready all the time for the Son of Man will come when least expected. It says you. You know, 
you're responsible for yourself. You're responsible for paying attention to signs of times and comparing it with scripture and everything else. It doesn't say anywhere. As a matter of fact, it warns five times about people warning. You know, trying to say they know this stuff. Warns you five times. A faithful, sensible servant is one whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. This is what we're supposed to do. We've got responsibility. How do we feed them? If you don't know how to feed people spiritually, you you got a lot to learn. Okay, you gotta you gotta start preparing today. If the master returns and finds the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. What do we got to do? We just have to learn how to feed people. You know, they got to eat on their own. We just supply the food, they do the preparations and everything else. But if that servant is evil and thinks my master won't be back for a while, and this is what these people think, oh yeah, I can make a whole lot of money off of this stuff, and then at the last second, jump the fence. And he begins beating the other servants, partying and getting drunk. And this is what these wannabe prophets of today want to do. They want to get rich, they want to get drunk. You see them with planes and boats and cars and all kinds of stuff. The master will return unannounced and unexpected. They're not going to see him coming at all. They've guessed it is coming a hundred times. They've been wrong a hundred times. They don't plan on being right, so they're not even really looking. And he will cut the servant in pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. With the hypocrites. Where did we see the word hypocrites before? Oh, in the previous chapter. You see, we understand that the people that are going to be the false messiahs and the false prophets these days are just like the people that killed Jesus. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, I just want to turn over to the next chapter because this story continues. Not like you've been taught, but it continues the way it continues. Because Jesus continues his explanation in Matthew 25. The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. Where did we see the oil? Uh, what was the meaning of Messiah or Christ, an anointed one? Brings us right back to the oil. You see how looking up that one word just explain this whole parable of the ten bridesmaids, the foolish and the wise. And that's what I want to do. You know, we want to practice. You know, the, 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 the little general rules of letting Scripture explain itself. And this is one way it does it. So, anyway, if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to leave your comments because there's a lot of different ways that people look at these prophecies about the end times and we're going to start seeing more and more details fall into place you know the more we see happening in this world so have a great day hope you learned something